Hi, welcome. I'm Carl Seibert. Today we're going to learn how to apply metadata in Adobe Lightroom. Now, we're assuming that you already know how to use Adobe Lightroom, and learning to use Adobe Lightroom is kind of a project. I highly recommend the wonderful Julianne Cost videos from Adobe as your Lightroom tutor. We have a folder full of photos, and we're going to apply some captions to them. So let's get going. The first thing you have to do before you can do anything to any photos in Lightroom is import them. So here's our folder full of photos. And if we go over to the right rail of the import dialog in Lightroom, we have a section called apply during import. And there we have metadata and a flyout. And we can apply a boilerplate template to our photos on import. Now we're pretending to be our buddy Joe Photographer again. And we just applied Joe's boilerplate metadata template, which contains all of his important copyright and contact information and his basic byline already in every photo. And as we can see, it took essentially zero work importing these photos into Lightroom to caption all of them with the boilerplate caption data. Now, mind you, if you're importing photos that already have metadata, you don't want to do that. So pause for a second before you hit that apply template on import button. Because sometimes in Lightroom, you're bringing pictures in that have already progressed a little ways down your workflow, and they might already have some metadata attached to them. Okay, so here we are, and Joe's template, the metadata, is applied, or should be applied, to all of these photos. In the right rail of the library module in Lightroom, there is a metadata section, and it's collapsible. It might need to be expanded. And in that metadata section, there's another flyout which offers you different views. I usually use the IPTC view. The reason for this is that space is a little bit constrained in that sidebar, and we can't just show all the fields all the time. But here with the IPTC view open, it's very easy to see that Joe's standard metadata is applied to all these pictures. Now, we're going to need to apply specific metadata to this bunch of pictures. So how do we do that in Lightroom? Well, I'm going to go back to this right rail. I'm going to change my view to something called large caption. And that just simply shows us just the caption field. And it's big enough that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go select this very first photo. And type in the information that's common to all the photos in this assignment. We'll say this is a test assignment that Joe needs to caption. Quick check for typos, and we're good. So now our challenge is to take this bit of information and copy it to all of these photos. And there are several ways to do this in Adobe Lightroom. The first way to do this is a simple copy and paste. We'll take this photo. Let's click off of it for just a moment to show that it indeed is the only one that contains the new information. We'll take this photo, we'll select it, we'll go to the metadata pull down at the top of Lightroom, and we will choose copy metadata. And that will bring up this dialog, which is the dialog for editing a template or what Adobe Lightroom calls a preset. And it brings up the same set of options when you're copying or syncing data. And as you can see, the field that we have just edited has a tick box beside it. That makes it live. That means that this particular template is going to overwrite that field in any target picture with this information. We do not have the ability to append or prepend information. We have to write out our whole caption, and we have to overwrite whatever's there on all of our target pictures at once. Now, if you can see here, all the rest of the information from Joe's template 
is not ticked. That means that those fields, as well as the fields that are blank, are inactive. They won't do anything. They won't overwrite existing data in a picture. They'll just leave it alone. So with this chosen, we can copy this information. And we will now select the rest of these pictures in this row. Or we could have just hit Command or Control A and selected all of our pictures. And we come back. We paste our metadata. We get a progress bar. And we'll click off. We'll click back on. And we can now see that the pictures in the first row have our new metadata attached. Our next method for copying metadata may be more natural to longtime Lightroom users. Lightroom has a function called sync. It's usually used in the develop module in Lightroom to copy toning and sharpening and cropping those sorts of adjustments from one photo to another. To use sync, we'll choose a photo. We'll choose this first photo that we added our information to, and we'll select it. That's going to make it active, or the source. We're then going to add to the selection using Command or Control click some more photos. So we have now selected our source or active photos and six more. And you can see that the highlighting on the source photo is just a wee bit brighter than the highlighting on the target photos. We then hit the sync button just like we would in the develop module of Lightroom. We get our same dialog box where we can choose which fields we're going to sync, which fields we're going to overwrite, which fields we're going to leave alone. And by the way, there are these handy little check boxes at the bottom, or handy buttons at the bottom, that allow you to check and uncheck and mass all the fields, only the fields that you've filled in, or none of the fields. And we hit synchronize. We get a dial, we get a progress bar. And we'll click off and we'll click back on. And we can see that we have added that information to those photos. Now, you can use the synchronize function or the copy and paste function for that matter, selectively copying from one photo to another if you have several that match. Um, here we have two photos that have runners in them. So if we go back, and the last step would, of course, be to go to each photo that needs individual caption information and give it some. So we will say this runner is participating in the metadata marathon. OK, fine. We can do that with each individual picture and identify what's in it. And if we find a pic two pictures where the same information could work, we can just use sync again, and we can copy the information. So at this point, once you've progressed through your pictures, you're done adding metadata. But in Adobe Lightroom, you're not quite done, because we haven't added the metadata actually to the files. We have added the metadata to Adobe Lightroom's database. And the way Lightroom works is it doesn't touch your original photo. It records all the changes that you want to make to it. And then when you export the photo to actually use it, it makes all of ch those changes and writes a new file to the disk. This is the beauty of Adobe Lightroom. It's also the complication of it. However, Adobe Lightroom records every change, not just captions, but toning and color information, every change you make to a photo. It records into its database as metadata. If you take a photo out of Lightroom, it won't have that new information. So your captioning could be lost. For that matter, your toning changes could be lost if anything happens to the database file, if it gets corrupted or anything. So Adobe has built a mechanism whereby it writes metadata changes losslessly, just like Photo Mechanic and the other programs that we'll discuss, losslessly to the files. This way, 
if a file is taken out of Lightroom, if you use another program later, it's still going to have its metadata. You're still going to be able to find it. So this is something that you really need to do. There are several ways to do this in Lightroom. The first and probably simplest way is you simply go to the Lightroom menu in the menu bar. You go to Catalog Settings, and then for each individual catalog, you have a global setting that you can turn on that will automatically write changes to XMP metadata. Not just captioning changes, but any kind of metadata change, which in Adobe Lightroom is anything that you've done to the file. Now that would seem like the safe option. That way you're backed up, your changes are all written to your files, you don't have to worry about it or think about it. So great, right? Well, not so great unless you have a really fast computer, because that means every time you do anything in Adobe Lightroom, it's going to stop and it's going to losslessly write that change to the file on disk. That is probably not going to be a good thing, so Adobe has provided us with a manual way to do it. We just select some pictures. We go back to the metadata pull down menu and we come down to save metadata to files. We select it. This dialog box is merely telling us that for compatible files it will write the metadata directly into the file and embed it. For files where it can't do that, camera raw files for example, it will write an XMP sidecar file. And you can in fact tick the tick box to say don't show this again or just habitually hit continue, you get a progress bar, and it has saved your metadata. Well, this is great because we haven't slowed down our computer, but it's not so great because maybe we missed a picture, and that's a real worry. So alternatively, we're going just to select all the pictures, we'll write all the metadata to all the files. There's nothing wrong with doing that, except that now that's going to take forever, and if you're wanting to close Adobe Lightroom, you'll get a very annoying dialog that says Adobe Lightroom is still applying your metadata. You'll come back later and it will still be applying your metadata and you'll be annoyed. So there is a workaround, sort of a third path that we can use. We can take advantage of Adobe Lightroom's Smart Collections function. And Smart Collections make virtual folders that reference photos based on criteria, dynamically. So that's in the left rail of Adobe Lightroom. And here we have our Smart Collections in our Collections panel. And we have one made for this purpose. We'll just take a quick look at it. And we've called it whatever we wanted to. I called it Metadata Changed. Here are the properties that you want to choose to make this Smart Collection. You want to match all of the following single rule. You want to choose from the first flyout, metadata status. The second flyout will already be is. From the third flyout, you choose has been changed. That's it. That will make you a smart collection in Lightroom that will show you all of the photos in your current view that need to have their metadata updated on disk in the files. And in this case, we manually did one row and one picture, so we manually did seven out of 24, and there are 17 left to do. And all we have to do is select them and save the metadata to the files, progress bar, and they very dramatically disappear from the smart collection as their criteria have changed, they're now up to date, so we now can't see them anymore. Now to actually use a photo from Adobe Lightroom, there's one more step. You have to export it. Remember that it doesn't touch your original photo, it just records all the things that you want to do to it. And when you export the photo, it actually does those things, and it makes a new file on disk. So, we're going to export this photo, that brings up the export dialog, 
where we can change all sorts of things. We choose the destination, we can name the photo, we can choose the JPEG quality settings, we can use the dimensions that it's going to be saved to, what format in fact it's saved to, and yeah, we have some choices that have to do with metadata. First we have a flyout and it says include all metadata or various subsets of the metadata. If you're going to use a photo on the web, probably all except camera and camera raw info would be your choice because those things are pretty useless to users on the web. But you can choose, for instance, to strip out everything except copyright information. Now, kudos to Adobe, you don't have the option to strip out all the metadata. If you really have to do that, the thing that I just showed you about templates and blanking can do that for you. But you really never, ever want to strip out copyright information. So those are your choices. We're going to choose all metadata to include. And there are some more choices here that might not be that familiar to you. Remove person info is referring to specialized keywords that Adobe Lightroom writes when it uses its facial recognition feature. They're in the keywords field, the keywords IPTC field. If you don't want them to be there on export, you can choose the tick box to remove them. And here we have remove location info. What this tick box does is it removes your GPS information, and it removes all of your physical address information. City, state, country, all of that stuff. It removes it regardless of whether it was input by Adobe automatically. Adobe Lightroom has the ability to resolve GPS addresses to physical addresses, or whether you entered it into the physical address fields by hand. If you want that information, great. If you don't want it, Tick this tick box and you can take it out. You hit export, there's a progress bar, and your picture will be exported in the file format and size that you chose and the destination that you chose ready to use for whatever you want to use it for. Now, there's much, much more to Adobe Lightroom. There's more to Adobe Lightroom, in fact, even where metadata is concerned, but this video is already probably too long. So I'd love to hear from you. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. And until next time, mind your metadata.